Hi everyone, I'm America Josh and welcome to the October 7 edition of our chat with Travel Josh Engstrom from Liberty Travel. G'day Josh, how are you? G'day, g'day. I'm good. How is everyone? How are you, Josh? Going very well, thank you. We uh, escaped the city a little bit this last weekend, which it's uh, some outdoor time and some greenery is, it's nice. <laughs> Yeah, you've got to get outside while while it's not too cold, right? Make yeah, the most it, of it. Winter's coming and it's uh, getting darker and darker every morning. From my wake up this morning, it, I got to see sunrise, which was delightful. <laughs> um, all right, let's jump right in. So we hear that there are some more flights being added um, to get back to Australia. So do you want to tell us, give us a little bit of an update about what's happening? Yeah, I've got some good news um, to give all of our listeners and readers um, this week. It looks like um, that the uh, airlines are starting to increase um, their amount of yield, um, meaning they're increasing their amount of flights into Australia, prim- primarily Sydney um, at this stage. Um, I've got some good news that Delta seem to be upping their flights from three days a week to five days a week for their LA to Sydney um, route, which is fantastic, which means that there's a sprinkling of availability going through. Um, act quick on these because they will be snapped up fast. Um, and then also we've got some good news that uh, Air New Zealand are starting to sell flights again from North America through to Sydney, uh, primarily at this stage at Sydney um, via Auckland. Um, so that's going to add a bit of yield and a bit of a few seats um, to the market to hopefully help Australians get home. So that's great news. That's wonderful news. So related to that, uh, Perth, Brisbane, Melbourne, Adelaide, the sort of alternative flights that haven't been as available in the past few months, uh, we started to chat about them last week. How are they looking at the moment? So no real update for um, the other cities into Australia. Primarily at the moment, the higher availability is going into Sydney. As far as I know, Brisbane and Melbourne and uh, Perth, well, Melbourne is still a no-go zone. Um, for international flights and I know that Perth, Brisbane and Adelaide are still extremely tight and extremely difficult to get into for the foreseeable future and when I talk about foreseeable future I'm talking about up to December, January. Okay, good to know. Well, not good to know, you know, so yeah, we're we're starting to, yeah, got to plan ahead as we've been saying from the beginning. Um, On that, uh, I know that we've got an update coming on October 4, but what what do you see, that's from the, the Australian government, what do you see for the next sort of, in addition to what you just said, for the next three to six months, what are you seeing? Yeah, um, there's a sprinkling of availability October, November, December into Sydney that I've I've seen today that there are some economy seats and uh, a bit more availability with Delta adding a couple more flights a week um, in premium economy, which is great news for us. Uh, I still see the next three months to be particularly difficult for people to get back home. They really need to put in a lot of planning. And in some cases, especially with the flights being held by people and maybe some changes happening with people, um, make sure that you're on top of it. So if a seat does become available, you're there ready to snap it up straight away. So the six-month period, I see coming into mid-January and then heading into February and March, um, I see that the availability kind of starting to get back to some kind of normality. Um, so the expectation is there um, by that time that we are all much better at dealing with the virus, in particular when it's, um, you know, passengers moving from one country to another. Hopefully by uh, March we've kind of got our stuff together a little bit better than what we have over the last year. And we'll, we'll be in 2021 by then, which is... <laughs> Sounding way better. Couldn't agree more. Uh, and I know that uh, we, we've been repeating this mantra a lot, but I think it's flexibility and planning in advance. They're the two things that everybody needs to um, you know, accept at the moment is that the further you can plan in advance, the better. And knowing that the date that you plan, you should be fine from you know everything we've talked about today and in the previous weeks. But it's important yeah. to be flexible a few days either side and, and really just sort of have a, a big picture look at your flight plans when you're trying to get back to Australia at the moment. Yeah, I think in terms of like coming up with a winning formula for you to get home, um, the winning formula would be stick to, if you're in the US, stick to your American carriers going uh, as direct as possible to Australia and the winning formula being also plan in advance. So plan in advance, try and stick to your American carriers where you can. 
um, and you should be able to have some luck um, getting home. Great. And every week we take questions uh, from all of the viewers and people that send us in emails and thank you to everyone that sends in an email. questions this week. Bring, keep bringing the questions in, guys. That <laughs> is good. It's, it's my favourite bit. No, it really helps us know what people need to hear. So if you do have questions or if you want to read Josh's blog that he writes every week, head to americajosh.com forward slash travel Josh. I've almost got this uh, animation right with my hands. Uh, so if you head to that website, um, you can submit questions. And the first question that we had submitted this week was from Jason. And Jason writes, is traveling to Australia via New Zealand an option? It appears Air New Zealand flights and prices are reasonable and reliable compared to other airlines. Josh. Yes. So the answer to that question is yes. And that is a great development that's happening. From what I can see, I can only see the Auckland to Sydney route um, opening up in December. I couldn't see Brisbane or Melbourne. Um, that is likely to change, um, especially as we move closer to those dates. I see that particularly as Victoria starts to reopen, um, that, and especially with the Australian government really wanting to try and get everyone home for Christmas, um, I would imagine that um, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, Air New Zealand add Brisbane and Melbourne to their routes, which would be a great um, way for Australians to get there from the US. Fantastic. And the second question we've got this week is from James. Hi, Josh. Have you heard of people being bumped from UA863? Are economy tickets being honoured? Are the flights going at limited capacity? Yes. Well, um, that flight there is the original, the OG um, flight for Australians getting uh, back to um, Australia from North America during the COVID crisis. Uh, United has been that service from San Francisco to Sydney has been the most reliable route um, for Australians getting home throughout this whole period. And um, as far as how many seats I've sold on that in economy class, I haven't had any clients bumped further than a day um, when um, they were bumped. So I feel very confident that economy tickets and um, tickets that people have bought um, for this route will be honoured and continue to be a very reliable route for Australians heading into uh, back home. Fantastic. One thing I did want to touch on before uh, we finish up, that previous question I asked, I, I forgot to ask a follow-up that I had around, uh, I, I understand that New Zealand currently is closed, I think to everyone but New Zealanders, but I just wanted to clarify that Australians are allowed to fly into New Zealand if they're passing through or what's the deal there? Yeah, so Australians are able to transit New Zealand. So when you're transiting Auckland, um, you will stay airside. You won't pass customs and immigration. Your luggage will go onward through New Zealand um, and your boarding pass will be collected um, from your point of origin. So what that means is that you're not technically landing in Auckland per se because you're staying airside in the airport. So it's um, they're, they're allowing Australian nationals to transit. So that's a really good question. Fantastic. Josh, thank you as always. And for everyone watching, if you do have questions or you want to read Josh's blog, as I said, it's at americajosh.com forward slash travel Josh. Josh, we really appreciate you taking the time again every week and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks so much, Josh. Thanks a lot.